Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Warhammer Fantasy Unit Reviews. In this series I will present and discuss all units from the official 8th edition Warhammer Fantasy Miniatures Wargame. Whew. Including a little bit of lore, but mainly focusing on unit stats, abilities and use. I will also try to explain the game in a way that everyone is able to understand the enormous amount of special rules this game offers, so that even a six-year-old may be able to understand the brutal bloodbath of Warhammer rules. And just before we start, I know that I just said that I will explain everything, each rule and stat to the detail. However, explaining everything in a single unit review would take at least an hour. So if you are a complete newbie to Wargames and Warhammer, you probably won't be able to understand everything I explain here. Don't worry, in the future I will explain all rules over time. Just be patient and you will be rewarded. But now, without further ado, let's start with a unit review. And we will start with... THE EMPIRE! Dun, 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 dun. State troops, the backbone of Imperial armies, trained men who march forth in these dark times, trying to hold the bastions of civilization in a sea of savagery. These grim troops are paid professionals, formed from the best men you can find. <laughs> Outside of combat, they serve as city guards, firewatch, and enforcers of law. And during a fight, they form large regiments of unrelenting men who will fend off any enemy. Each unit in Warhammer has one profile, and each model from that unit has its point cost. In this case, we will be looking at halberdiers and spearmen state troops, since both share the same profile and show us very basic human stats. We are all just humans, and so it's easier for us to see what a human in this world is capable of doing in comparison with other creatures. And here we can see the very basic profile of basic human soldiers. Movement of 4, weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 3, Strength 3, Toughness 3, 1 Wound, Initiative 3, 1 Attack, and Leadership of 7. Now, this is a very interesting profile, since this is basically us, regular humans. These are our stats. Just Weapon Skill, Ballistic Skill, and Leadership are probably those of a moderately trained soldier. But for everything else, you can look at yourself and say, Yeah, Toughness 3! The cost of both troops is quite similar, with a halberdier 6 points per model and the spearmen's 5. This translates to a slightly better wound per point ratio for the spearmen. However, to make a math test easier, I decided to grant the spearmen the shield upgrade for 1 point per model, so they both have an equal point cost. Equipment wise, both units have light armor without any extra cost, which grants both units a 6 plus armor save. Thanks to the shield, the spearman improves his armor by 1 to a 5 plus armor save. So we can overall say that the survivability of the spears is slightly higher compared to the halberdiers. The spearman has a spear and shield, at least in this case. And the halberdier has a halberd. But what does this mean? The spear confers a fight and extra rank special rule, which does not apply in a turn in which a model charged. Halberds confer plus one strength to their bearer, which provides the halberdiers a total strength of four. If we have a small block of 20 halberdiers, just 10 models are able to attack. Spearmen, on the other hand, are able to attack with 15 models. So now we have them fight each other. Yeah, oh, fight! Oh. In a 1 vs 1 fight, the average winner is the halberdier. Thanks to the halberd's higher strength, the additional armor of the spearman is negated, and overall the chance of killing the opponent is 20.83% for the spearman and 27.77% for the halberdier. But how do they perform in a group fight? Do the spearmen win this time due to the higher number of attacks? And indeed, halberdiers cause 2.7 wounds on average, Spearmen kill 3.125 on average, but be warned, this only applies if the spearmen have the third rank. As soon as the spearmen start losing models from the third rank, the damage potential shrinks, whereas the halberdiers still are able to attack with their full force until their second rank is damaged. However, this only applies to fights against this kind of stats and armor, so toughness 3 and 5 plus slash 6 plus armor save. In fact, against heavier troops, the halberdier consistently wins in terms of damage output. 
As we can see, Halberdiers perform better against armor and basically dominate toughness 4 and 5 in comparison with the spears. The spearmen only have an advantage against toughness 3, no armor targets or super heavy armor targets. But what's that? Against toughness 6 or higher, the spearmen win in almost all cases. Well, that's because from tier 6 on, both units wound their target on rolls of 6. On all lower values, the halberdier always has the edge, since its wound roll is always at least one better. So targeting high toughness monsters with spearmen is in fact a better idea than fighting them with halberdiers. But toughness 6 is comparably rare, usually found in the monster section. So overall I would say that halberdiers take the cake in terms of good damage output. Now about hordes. An infantry unit that is at least 10 models wide is considered a horde. The horde formation allows units to attack with a further rank, which is compatible with other such bonuses. This means that our spearmen would attack with 4 ranks instead of 3, and the halberdiers attack with 3 ranks instead of 2. In the usual 2000 point game, I would always recommend using a horde to form your main units and have smaller units support them in the flanks. So let's look at the chart if we are using hordes with 40 models each and 4 ranks deep. As we can see, it is very similar to our non-horde chart. However, the halberdiers seemingly increase their damage output by a good amount, even overtaking the spearmen in some regions where the spearmen previously dominated. That's because of a model increase. Before, we had 10 halberdiers versus 15 spearmen in the contest. So the spearmen outnumbered the halberdiers in the number of attacks by 50%. In the new horde formation, the spearmen attack with 40 attacks and the halberdiers with 30. So they still outnumber the halberdiers, but only by having 33% more attacks instead of 50%. So far, the halberdiers seem to be at least a little bit better. But let's not forget the extra shields on the spearmen. The extra protection makes them slightly more durable than the halberdiers. The 5 plus armor means a total of 33% of incoming damage is blocked by the armor on average. Whereas the 6 plus armor of a halberdiers converts to just 16.67% damage blocked. Against strength 4 attacks or attacks with the armor piercing special rule, the halberdiers armor is fully negated, whilst the spearmen still hold the now 6 plus armor to protect themselves. Against strong damage dealers with strength 5 or higher or attackers with a strength of 4 with the armor piercing special rule, both units have no chance of blocking any damage on their own. Ahem, excuse me. The halberdier's profile specifically states that the halberdier may take the shield upgrade just as the spearman. So your claim about the spearman being higher in defensive capabilities is incorrect and your objective document is silence. Halberdiers are only able to use this against ranged damage, since melee combat requires them to use both hands on their halberd. So it's a 5 plus armor save against ranged damage and a 6 plus armor save in melee. This comes at the cost of 1 point per model. So if you are afraid of low strength firepower, taking a shield for the halberdiers might be the right decision. If you have a points to spend, of course. But overall, in terms of defense, the spearmen perform better. But who would be the better unit to use as a detachment? Both units have this rule, so both can be used as a nice protective unit. If the regimental unit is charged, the detachment is able to perform a charge reaction. In this case, the units may countercharge an enemy that successfully charged the regimental unit. Overall, the halberdier takes the price as a detachment, since the spearmen cannot use their additional rank of attacks in a turn during which they charged, so they would have to wait until the next turn for the full damage potential. In addition, you will often charge the flank of the enemy with your detachment, and additional defense isn't that necessary if attacking the flank since units cannot make supporting attacks to their flank and just the models in base contact are allowed to attack a flankers. And now the conclusion. If you are playing the Empire and deciding which of these two units to take as your main infantry core, I would recommend taking the Halberdiers in a horde formation of 40 to 50 models. Their higher damage output makes them more suitable in a direct confrontation with the enemy's core units. Try to buff them with magic or stick a warrior priest with them. Make use of the spearmen in smaller units of 20 to 30 models and hold off those flanking monsters. Alternatively, you can try to buff their damage with magic, especially if you take wizards that increase their chance of wounding an opponent or increasing their strength. Spearmen suddenly become much stronger than halberdiers. You may also use the spearmen as a slightly more durable unit 
and protect your damage dealing missile units. And that's it. In general, there are tons of things that still need explanation, tons of rules, and even I myself don't know why I started with a unit and not with more general rules. Uh, I don't care. I hope you enjoyed this and you will see me in the next video. Ciao!